It is really difficult to talk about the mythology of America without the risk of being incredibly offensive to one of the many cultures that have been harmed by the growth of this country. Whether it's vilifying Native Americans to further expansion into their lands, or the many terrible years of slavery that still affect African American people today, you can't deny that America's growth has been troublesome. Mythology in post-colonial America is scarce. This is likely due to the time when America was founded. I firmly believe that it was founded right on the tail end of the mythological age. Now, instead of tales that get passed down from generation to generation, you can publish a book that's seen by millions. While books are amazing, and we should all support the people that write them, I also think some magic is lost in the transition. I'm hoping that by making this video, I keep some of the magic that I grew up with alive. This video was supposed to be about the tales of Paul Bunyan, a literal larger-than-life lumberjack. But the more I researched the story, the more it became clear that it was likely created by the lumber industry in order to promote themselves. I don't think that really qualifies as mythology, legend, or folklore, so I decided to go a different route. A route that takes us out west, and to a time when America was still expanding across the continent. I am, of course, talking about Pecos Bill, a legendary cowboy with even more legendary exploits. As the story goes, Pecos Bill was born into a family of 18 children back when Texas was just being discovered. He was a tough baby even at a young age. It's said that he chewed on a bowie knife to cut his teeth in. One day, after his family decided to move west, they were crossing the Pecos River when Bill fell out of the wagon and was lost for years. Pecos Bill was rescued and raised by coyotes. Bill learned to speak coyote and hunt like one. He was lost at such a young age that he grew up thinking he was a coyote. Stories diverge slightly here, with some saying he was found by a cowboy while fighting two grizzly bears, and others saying that he was found by his brother. Whatever the story is, this was the point in time when Pecos Bill was reunited with human civilization. It didn't take long for Pecos Bill to fall into the cowboy lifestyle. From here, his adventures started to get crazier and crazier. According to the stories, he fought oversized mountain lions, used a snake as a lasso, and killed all the bad men in Texas. Pecos Bill was feared by bad guys all over the West. He traveled on his incredible horse Widowmaker, which he raised from a baby. It's said that the horse lived on dynamite and nitroglycerin. The two Pecos Bill stories that really stood out to me growing up were how he created the Grand Canyon and his marriage to slew-footed Sue. In the first, he roped a cyclone and rode it across three states, carving out the Grand Canyon along the way. When it couldn't throw him off, it rained itself away. Where Bill fell became known as Death Valley, a place that's hundreds of feet below sea level. Bill met slew-footed Sue while she was riding a giant catfish through the Rio Grande. They fell in love and were wed. On their wedding day, Sue wanted to ride Bill's horse, but when she did, the horse decided to throw her. She was thrown so hard and so high that she nearly hit the moon. When she came down, instead of stopping, she bounced. It's said that she bounced for three days, and in the end, Pecos Bill had to shoot her dead because she was starving. The stories of Pecos Bill are incredible, and really illustrate the lifestyle and emotions of the time. When you peel away the fantasy, it's a story about a fascinating person trying to do good in a world full of adversity. However, on another note, it also highlights the self-destructive, narcissistic pride that's prevalent in American society, a problem that still exists today. I want to eventually do a video on John Henry, but I think it's less about American mythology and more about African American mythology. I would like to do more research and perhaps get a guest narrator so that I can cover things correctly. Until then, I hope this small glimpse into the folklore of my country has been enjoyable. Till next time.